rest of the story. Once upon a time in a field near the little French village of Cloyes, a 12-year young shepherd boy named Stephen was tending his flock. The shadows of evening yawned and stretched across the open spaces. All was peaceful when suddenly the boy heard a sound, turned, and beheld a stranger. Marveling at how someone could have approached from afar without attracting his attention, Stephen asked the stranger's name. There was returned only a faint, sweet smile, and at once as he gazed into the man's eyes, the shepherd knew he was in the presence of the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The boy fell to his knees, still gazing up in wonder, and he asked, What is it that you would have me do, Lord? In a still small voice, the man answered him. He told of how the crusades of the faithful to free Jerusalem from unbelievers had failed, because the hearts of the crusaders were impure. But, he said, the next crusade would succeed because it would be comprised of only the purest and the most innocent. It would be made up entirely of children. And Stephen said the man must be their leader. And thus, with a vision in the French countryside in the spring of the year 1212, was launched what history recalls as the children's crusade. But this is the rest of the story. Inspired by what he'd seen and heard, Stephen the shepherd boy left his flock to spread the word. If the children of France would merely join him in his glorious quest, the Lord himself would part the Mediterranean Sea and conduct them safely to the Holy Land and deliver the Holy City into their hands. Hundreds, moved by the passion of Stephen's plea, rushed to his side then thousands. Some were children of serfs, others were of noble birth, and yet all were as one in their devotion to this new righteous cause. A miracle worker, the youngsters called Stephen. The grown-ups, on the other hand, parents and church, even Francis King, were utterly opposed to Stephen's mission. The devil was behind this somehow, they insisted, yet neither admonitions nor threats of punishment nor even barred doors could keep the children from their young leader. The Crusades' outcome vindicated the skeptics. For 300 miles, Stephen and his followers, tens of thousands by now, trudged to the Mediterranean, where the waters did not part. Instead, the young Crusaders were taken aboard a fleet of ostensibly friendly merchant ships, which shortly thereafter encountered a terrible storm. Some of the vessels went down, 1,400 children drowned. The rest did reach the northern coast of Africa, where the merchants revealed their true purpose, to sell the children into slavery. And only a handful lived to return home and relate what you have just heard. It was a tale of horror that Europeans would not soon forget. And thus ever so slowly did the absolute truth evolve into a legend. For it is said that once there was a charming young man who came to town and played his enchanted pipe, and the children followed him beyond the city gates and into oblivion. All your life you've known that story, but now you know how it really happened, because now you've met the original, now you've met the real Pied Piper of Hamelin. Now you know the rest of the story.